Today's video is going to focus on discernment. So if you clicked on this in order to hear my opinion in regards to whether or not I think abortion is right or wrong, or if you clicked on it in order to hear whether or not I think we should be legislating anything in regards to abortion, you're going to be highly disappointed because I'm not going to give you my opinion on those two points. People in the comments, I guarantee you, are going to try to tell you what they think I believe or what they inferred that I believe based on this video, but I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to give you my opinion on either of those two points because this video is not about my opinion in that regard. This video is about why we should be discerning, why we should focus on discernment. News agencies get money based on how many people click on their links. So they post things that are emotionally charged in order to get us to respond emotionally. So I want to show you why discernment is so important. So if you're coming into this video as a Christian or a non-Christian, as someone who is pro-life or pro-choice, someone who's Republican or Democrat, or anywhere in between any of those categories, I want you all to take a deep breath with me. I'm going to give you a lot of information, and we're going to focus on discernment. Now, before I get to this news story, I want to remind you, if you're a Christian, from the book of James, these important words. As Christians, everyone should be quick to listen. We should be slow to speak and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. If you're a non-Christian, at least that should still speak true to you, because there is truth in that statement. It is good to be quick to listen, to be slow to speak, and slow to become angry. So let's all practice that together today as we go through the next portion of the video. So I read an article recently that was talking about how the Satanic Temple opposed the heartbeat bill that passed in Texas on religious exemption grounds. So if you've been watching the news at all, you would have seen that uh, Texas passed something called the heartbeat bill, which is a, essentially a ban on abortion in the state of Texas. The Satanic Temple released a statement that said the following, and I'm going to summarize. This law imposes an undue burden on any of its members to undergo its satanic abortion ritual. You see, in their mind, they're saying abortion is a sacramental act that confirms the right of bodily autonomy. So essentially what they're saying is, hey, this bill affects their religious rights. Now this group, the Satanic Temple, has about 300,000 members and was formed in 2012. Now I'm telling you all this in advance because I'm going to read you a tweet from a politician that came out on Monday. And again, it's an emotionally charged tweet to get an emotional response. So I want us all to use discernment when we read it. So this comes from Dan Crenshaw. He tweeted these words. If you're ever wondering if you're on the right side of history, just check on which side the Satanists are on. A principle that I live by is that if a politician is telling you something, it's probably not completely true. It's probably a half-truth, which is really a whole lie. So let's take a deep breath and examine what he's really saying. What he's trying to say is that this group of people worship Satan, which isn't true. He's saying that Throughout history, Satanists have always been on the wrong side of history. Well, this group was formed in 2012, so that's also not true. So again, this is an emotionally charged statement. It's full of untruth. And the whole point of the article was to get you, as a Christian, to click on it and get upset. Take a deep breath. And understand that we need to do our own research and not take anything that anyone tells us for granted. And this is no defense of the Satanic Temple. Please don't take it that way. But understand, this group doesn't actually worship anything. They're not religious in the sense that they are worshiping a being. They don't worship Satan. They're really just a group of atheists that, if anything, they worship themselves. Now, as a Christian, we can still stand opposed to that group because pride, remember, is truly Satan's largest sin, greatest sin, whatever you want to say. Isaiah chapter 14 reminds us of the I will statements of Satan. He has five I will statements. These are really the statements that show how prideful Satan is. And pride is the sin that really leads to all other sins. So I can stand opposed to this group, not because they worship Satan, because they don't, but they worship themselves, and pridefulness in itself is a sin from a Christian standpoint. Now, the other thing Dan says in his tweet is that 
if you want to judge what is historically right and what's historically wrong, look at who the Satan's, Satanists side with. And again, that's that's really just a bad argument because this group wasn't founded until 2012. And honestly, Christians have done a ton of damage to other humans throughout the course of history. The reason is because people are bad. All people, myself included, we're all horrible. And we all affiliate with different things. So religion is flawed because man is flawed, not because God is flawed. But again, we have to be wise. We have to use discernment and realize that this statement from this politician isn't based in a lot of truth. Again, this isn't a defense of the Satanic Temple. This isn't a defense or an argument for or against abortion. This is just to show how important it is to use discernment. Because as a Christian, I could read this article and immediately get emotionally upset and say, why would you stand on this side of the argument if people who worship Satan agree with it? But if you do just a little bit of research, you'll realize that the article itself and the statement from the politician is really based in have-truths at best. So we must use discernment. So I'm going to leave you with this. Don't react ever based on your immediate emotional response. Take a deep breath. Be quick to listen. Be slow to speak and slow to get angry. Remember to examine everything that anyone tells you, including what I'm telling you right now. Examine it for yourself. That is your duty. You must do that. You must always examine the evidence. Examine the evidence for Jesus Christ. Examine the evidence for Christianity. And examine the evidence for every single thing that anyone tells you. Don't accept anything that you're told is truth without examining it for yourself. And last, if you're a Christian watching this video, remember you are a Christian first. Everyone under the sun, atheist, Christian, other faiths, people of different political parties, everybody tries to legislate morality. That will never solve the issue. Regardless of where you stand on this, legislating it won't change the heart of man. Sinfulness is the problem. Disobedience to God is the problem. And as Christians, we have to remember, although we want to believe that we live in a Christian nation, we don't. Not anymore, for sure. I don't even think, historically speaking, I was a history major, I don't ever think this country was truly a Christian nation, and some of you may disagree with that. But at the end of the day, we haven't acted like it. Even if we were a Christian nation, we didn't act as Jesus would want us to act throughout all of history. And remember, the reason is because people are bad. And our job as Christians is not to argue about politics, not to argue about legislation. Yeah, those things are good. And yeah, we should get involved. There's some of us that are called to that. But our primary job is to reach out to others about the truth of the gospel message. We are fallen. The wages of our sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's the message we should be bringing to people. So if you are so focused on political agendas and political activity and legislating morality, you are not solving anything. You're just perpetuating all of history. We, as Christians, are called to do something different, to point people to the foot of the cross and call them to repentance and obedience to God. That is our job. All glory to God, friends. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.